Yo best. Yo best. Yo best. That shit crazy. On a Tuesday. It's all even with your boy Barry Grant. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at All Even Podcast. You can listen to the show on Podbeam as well as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Deezer, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify. I'm all over the place, man. And trust me, go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, like, share, and comment because the page is growing, baby. That All Even Wave, get on that wave. Lots to get into. We had a crazy divisional round of the playoffs this week, and I think it's A lot of people are saying it's the best weekend in football history. Lots to get into with that. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, their futures are up in the air. Sean Payton walks away from the Saints. AB wants to play for the Ravens. AD returns. James Harden wants to leave Brooklyn. Big Poppy gets into the Hall of Fame. And there's some other stuff I got to talk about as well. And then the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. So let's just jump right into it. A lot of people are calling this past weekend walk-off weekend. The divisional round of the playoffs, some of the best football I've seen in recent memory. Like, you know, you're, you're hearing that everywhere. by saying that it's the greatest weekend ever. Oh, it's the best football we've ever seen. I, I mean, listen, we're, we're prisoners of the moment. I'm not going to go there. Was it exciting? Absolutely. Were all the games good? Absolutely. Joe Burrow, he shocks the world by, you know, beating the number one seed in Tennessee on a field goal, walk off. You had the 49ers who were beat down and injured, and they really stifled Aaron Rodgers in the second half. That offense got stagnant. They win on a walk off field goal. The Rams up 27 to 3, and then we start getting nightmares. Of Tom Brady, 28-3 with the Atlanta Falcons as he leads the charge and pulls them back even. And we're all like, oh my goodness. But then Matthew Stafford strikes, Cooper Cup strikes, field goal, walk off. And then a nightcap, Bills and Chiefs goes back and forth. Great game, overtime, walk-off touchdown. So, is it a first? I'm sure it is. I'm sure the stat guys are going to be all over this, which is great. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has their ability to break down these games and the weekend how they want to, right? What I'm going to highlight here. You know, because everybody has regurgitated the score and the performances and this and that. What I want to highlight is what we saw this weekend is that your quarterback matters. Outside of San Francisco, all the other teams, the Rams got a good quarterback, the Bucks. Have arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. The Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, who's going to be the next up. Josh Allen, one of the very good, if not elite quarterbacks in all of football. You have Aaron Rodgers. You have Joe Burrow. All of those guys won games except for Titans and the Packers, right? That's the outliers, those two games. But other than that, you need a great quarterback, a playmaking quarterback to win football games. It came down to great quarterback play. Defense is great and all that, but guys got to make throws. Guys have to step up in the pocket and deliver passes that are catchable passes that can be able to move the chains. Having... A playmaking quarterback matters. You can be able to direct traffic if you're a traffic agent in New York City. But if you're really not that good at your job, you're going to create some congestion. You're going to create some traffic when you're supposed to relieve the traffic. If you have a great 
traffic agent out there that knows what they're doing and knows how to pull the cars this way and keep things flowing. You'll never have a problem. Having a great signal caller matters. I've, I always had this conversation with my brother. Shouts to Ryan in Jamaica. Yeah, and he's always, ah, oh, you know, you can win a Super Bowl with an average quarterback. You just need a great defense. You need a great running game. And I'm sure that's true. But what I've seen over the last few years, hell, the last decade, is that if you don't have somebody that is a great signal caller that can make big plays, it's not going to matter how good your defense is. It's not going to matter how good your running game is. You have to have somebody that can deliver the football control the game, and actually make plays, take over the game, go off script. That's what separates the great teams from the average teams. I think I think the Cowboys are average because of the quarterback that they have. Quarterback that is devoid of making big-time off-script plays. That's the problem. Yes, the coaching staff is bad. All of those things are true. But you need a playmaking quarterback. You need an artist that can be able to paint a masterpiece. You need somebody that's going to come and paint your home, not do an uneven job. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. Somebody that can be able to hold up the pillars While everything crumbles around them. That's what you need. Can't really win with an average quarterback or a below average quarterback. The 49ers are an outlier. You know, it's possible that their run ends this weekend. Or maybe not. We don't know. But I do know that the later you get into the playoffs, the more you're expecting your quarterback to do. And the rest of the quarterbacks that are left... Burrow, Stafford, Mahomes, those guys can be able to do it. So it matters. It matters who you have at quarterback. It matters that you need a special quarterback, not just a regular guy, not just a Joe Schmo off the street, not just somebody who has a rocket arm but doesn't really know how to pinpoint and deliver the football accurately. You need somebody who can make something out of nothing. Josh Allen can do that. Patrick Mahomes can do that. Tom Brady can do that. Matthew Stafford has shown the ability to do that in his one year in Los Angeles. Joe Burrow, all of these guys, these guys are marksmen. They're they're surgeons at their craft. So who do I think was the best surgeon this weekend? They had a lot of great performances. Okay, you could talk Mahomes. You could talk Josh Allen. But I'm going Tom Brady. Tom Brady, what he did on Sunday just just doesn't make sense. Obviously, you needed breaks to happen, right? You needed Cooper Cup to fumble. You needed Cam Akers to fumble a couple of times. You needed a bad snap. And he had such a poor first half that it makes the second half that much more impressive. This is a 44-year-old man doing this. So Tom Brady gets the best to do it award this weekend because he got voodoo. I don't know what type of agreement he made with whatever soul-snatching demon is out there, but Tom Brady did it. (laughs) Tom Brady... Tom Brady is like Dorian Gray. Doesn't age. He just continues to be great. Something's up. And I, I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Tom. But definitely shouts to him. Uh, what a beautiful weekend. Like I said, what a great weekend for football it was. But what I took away from it, it's not only the great games, not only the clutch performances, but just the spectacular quarterback play. And I, I think that... All of that gets lost in the grand scheme of things that, you know, all these these teams, these quarterbacks, there's only a few of them that can do this. And we saw it on display this weekend. 
This is why it's so hard to get a quarterback. This is why it's so hard to get a franchise guy like that because when you do, things change. Look at what's going on in Cincinnati. We're talking about the Bengals here. The Bengals haven't been good since the 80s. Last time they went to a Super Bowl was, what, 88, 89? And now they have themselves a quarterback, and they're in the AFC Championship game. It's not by mistake. It's not by accident. When you have a great quarterback, and you have a guy that can be able to go off script and make plays, and pretty much carry your football team offensively, that is what they say is by design. Coming up after the break, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Both of them had rough weekends. Both are going to decide their futures very soon. Sean Payton steps away from the Saints. And A.B. wants to play for the Ravens. Oh, On a Tuesday night. It's all even. Yo, it's your man DJ G Money for that Flip the Script podcast. Yeah, 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 we in the yeah, studio yeah. right now. Flip shut up. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, listen. Shout out to the All Even podcast. My oh, man Barry oh, Grant Jr. Whoa, 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 What's up, whoa, man? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? What you, what you, what you want to say to the people? Shout out to my young podcast. Yeah, my man is What's up? All Even. All Even podcast. Yo, it ain't even up here, boy. <laughs> we put this What's up, man? All Even. Yo, you. Oh, my God. What's up with you, man? Now, you got well, that's a shout out. You keeping this? Yeah, keep all that. <laughs> you want all even podcast, right? Yeah, all Welcome back, y'all. So who blinks first? Who is going to be the one to... One up the other. Both great legendary quarterbacks lost this weekend. Aaron Rodgers lost a heartbreaker in Lambeau Field, 13-10 to the 49ers. I still don't know what happened. I mean, I can give you a kind of quick breakdown. When you have Matt LaFleur as your head coach, it's possible that's going to happen. We've seen it over the last two years, so I'm not shocked. He loses. You can tell that he's dejected from the loss. And he came out and said that he's going to think about it, think about his future. He's going to let the organization know very soon regards to what his plans are, whether he's going to stay with the Green Bay Packers or he's going to inform them that he's going to move on. Or he may just shock everybody and retire. That's a possibility as well. Tom Brady... Lost the heartbreaker in Tampa to the Rams. And he himself is thinking about his particular future. I don't necessarily believe that he wants to switch teams. It's more about if he wants to continue to play. So who blinks first? What situation is going to reveal itself first? Well, I think if you're going to put a time frame on it, I think the one that has the most pressing need or the need to know quickly is the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay, you know, they're in flux right now. They have Devontae Adams, who's a free agent. They have Jordan Love, who's there as the heir apparent to the throne, I guess. You have Aaron Rodgers, who's doing his Brett Favre thing. So the longer it drags out is the worse it is for the Packers because they're unable to do certain things. They're unable to maybe prepare for the draft the way they would want to. Like if Aaron is not here, they're going to have to start looking quarterback heavy. If Aaron is here, then they're going to do their best to try to get some offensive pieces to be able to put around Aaron with Devontae Adams, maybe another outside receiver, maybe an inside guy. Somebody that can be able to catch the ball and take some pressure off of Devontae Adams, who had a great game on Sunday in the first half. But the Green Bay Packers, they are going to need to know soon. And the problem that I have with Aaron Rodgers is that what more 
does he need to see from the Green Bay Packers to make a decision? It's either you want to stay there or not. They've bent over backwards for you. They gave you Randall Cobb. They let you stay out the entire training camp but not do anything last year. You grew out your hair like a hippie. You had your I'm immunized moment, and the Packers stood behind you. They've done everything. So the least you can do is be able to give them an answer. If you don't want to be in Green Bay, if you feel that you can't win there, it's a very easy conversation to have. Can you guys provide this? No, we're kind of cap, we're kind of cap struck. So uh, I don't know. Okay, cool. Well, now I feel like I have to go elsewhere. Okay, cool. So we can be able to start preparing for our future as well. Great. Make it an amicable breakup, but don't drag it out. Don't drag it out. There's no sense to, because if he does drag it out, if Aaron Rodgers does do this. I think the Packers are going to have to be forced to do something drastic. Like, they're going to have to say, listen, bro, you know how we said that we're going to sit here and wait for you? and We ain't doing that no more. We're going to make up your mind for you. We're going to move on. You're going to have to find another team or you retire or do whatever you want to do. But we are not going to do this. We are going to move forward. We have a young head coach. We can be able to maybe develop a Jordan Love or maybe get somebody else who we can be able to Plug that void until we get our franchise guy. But we are moving on. We're tired of this. We're, we're, we're not going to do this again with you. We did it with Brett. We're not going to do it with you too. So that's what's going to happen, I believe. But we're talking about the situation in Tampa. The situation in Tampa is a little different. I, I mean, it's a lot different, I guess. They won a Super Bowl. They were banged up this year. They had a lot of off-the-field issues, on-the-field issues. You know, a lot of different things, a lot of moving parts on this team this year, and it just didn't come together the way it's supposed to, right? But Tom Brady is starting to feel it. Tom Brady's like, listen, I, I don't know how long I'm going to play. I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep doing this at a high level. You know, if we would have won the Super Bowl and got there, I would have been fine with that, and I would have been able to walk away. Now, the fact that I lost in the divisional round, that competition, that competitive side of me wants to keep going. But my children, they're getting older. My wife, she wants me home. All of these things that I want to do outside of football, they're starting to call my name. I don't know how long I can do this. Now, is that the right decision? There is no right or wrong. I just believe that the Tampa Bay Bucks are going to give Tom Brady all the time he actually needs because what else are they going to do? Can't do anything else. Tom Brady is the reason why you guys are in this position. So if you have to wait four months, five months, six months, yeah, then that's what you do. Got no choice, really. So both guys have very murky futures. Not really sure how it's going to end up, but if Tom Brady is calling the it quits. It's the greatest NFL career we've ever seen and probably will see again. For Aaron Rodgers, if he ends up retiring, it's one of the the most talented football players we've ever seen that should have done more in regards to winning. Yes, he has the individual MVPs, the three MVPs. But Super Bowls, he's only been to one, and he won one. Everybody's saying that he should have had more, especially after these last three years that they've had in Green Bay. It's it's really disappointing. So if I'm going to make a prediction, if I'm going to make a guess of what Aaron does, I think Aaron moves on. That's my opinion. I think Aaron looks at Denver. I think he looks at possibly Vegas. I think he looks at, I don't know, maybe Minnesota. Maybe he actually does come full circle and do the Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre went to New York. Then he went to Minnesota. That's where he wanted to play. Who knows? But I think that Denver and Vegas, there are the... You know, if they can be able to work that out, I think those destinations are the best spots for Aaron Rodgers. 
I don't see Aaron Rodgers going to Miami. I don't see that at all. For Tom Brady, the best decision, what I personally think he's going to do, I think Tom Brady is going to come back for one more season, going to finish out the contract, and then that's it. I think I think he'll do that. I, th- I think he has to take some time to really see if he wants to do it, speak to his kids if they say, hey, Dad, yo, go ahead, finish it out, finish it out strong, no matter how it ends, but this is it. So he can be able to have that Kobe Bryant, you know, swan song type of last hurrah tour. I think Brady deserves that. So I'm hoping we get that, but we'll see. In other news, the internet almost broke today in regards to the NFL. Sean Payton was mulling his future. You know, Gail Benson had come out and they said, you know, we haven't heard from him. We don't know what's going on. We're just waiting. And then the bombshell drops. Sean Payton is stepping away from the New Orleans Saints after 16 years as the head coach. Now, we could look at this a few different ways. We can say that he doesn't want to coach this particular team anymore or he sees the writing on the wall in regards to the cap hell that they're in. Or, just like all of us, who sit behind a mic and speak and talk and run our mouths for hours at a time, how many hours a week we do this, maybe he's just burned out. Maybe he's just burned out of the grind of coaching and the fact that they've gotten so close over the years and, you know, bad luck this and this bad play and this bad break that we had the COVID the last two years. His team's been ravaged with it. This year as well. All of those things are just taxing. And I just believe that maybe Sean Payton is just tired. He just just can't do anymore. So there's rumors that, you know, he's going to possibly look at an analyst job. And all the major networks are going to want him. Everybody's going to want Sean Payton. He's, He's a personality. He's funny. Engaging. Breaks down the game. He's an X and O's dynamo. So, you know... Having him on a broadcast would be, it would be great. It would be tremendous in regards to just breaking down the game, right? So he's it's going to be needed in that field. Does he step away and just do that and kind of take a year off? Yeah, I, that looks like the case. But here's the crazy side of me. Sean Payton takes a couple months off and he mulls this. And Jerry calls. Jerry's been wanting Sean Payton for a long time. Jerry would pretty much do anything to get Sean Payton. Sean Payton answers the phone. He listens. Jerry says, hi, Sean. Uh, here's the deal. I have $150 million with your name on it. $15 million a year, 10 years. What you say you? Sign a contract. Take a little time off. We want to take a couple weeks. But we're going to make this trade for you. We're going to call Gail. Get it done. Sean says, yeah, I like the idea of coaching the Cowboys. I, I've always wanted to coach the Dallas Cowboys. So what ends up happening there? You still got Mike McCarthy under under contract. Do you call Mike McCarthy into the office? Do you have a meeting and say, hey, listen, we're going to you know, decide to go in a different direction. You know, I I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, yada, yada, yada. You can do that if you're Jerry Jones. But if you were me, if you were me, you'd pick up that phone and you'd send a text to Mike McCarthy. And you'd say, hey, you know, Mike, it's just not working out. It's not you, it's me. It's us, you know, it's just the the fit is just not there. You know, the expectations were high. Hey, hey, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, Mike. It was too much for all of us. But what we have to do now is just go our separate ways and hope for the best. Mike McCarthy doesn't know that Sean Payton is on the next flight coming to Dallas. He just says, oh, well, I guess, you know, just didn't work out. And as soon as 
he decides to go to the building to go say goodbye to Jerry and say goodbye to Steven and, you know, kind of leave on the right way. Who does he see walk through the door? It's Sean Payton. Awkward, yes, but necessary. That, that's, that's the scenario that just played out in my head. Long story short, Jerry Jones needs to go get Sean Payton. The last time a coach was traded was John Gruden from the Oakland Raiders got traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back in 02. It's possible. It needs to happen. But you give him time. You let him kind of, you know, think about his future a little bit. But don't let him think too long because $150 million, Jerry, that's the deal. That's the deal you got to give him. Let him coach the team. He's not going to really care about power. He doesn't want to build the roster. He wants to collab. If you want to build the roster, go ahead. Just let him coach. Let him be the guy. And Jerry Jones is approaching 80 years old. I sure believe, I truly, truly believe that after that loss in the wild card round, Jerry Jones sat there. You heard all of the pundits. Everybody's saying all year how great this team is, how good they are, that they can make it all the way. He heard all of those things, and then he really looked around, and reality hit him like, we lost. All of those people that said how good we are, we lost. So what difference does it make? I am 80 years old. I may not ever get a chance like this again, but if Sean Payton is available, I got to get him, and I don't care what it takes. I don't care if I got to hurt feelings. I don't care if I got to step on a few people here. I don't care. I got to win. We are really going to see if winning is all that Jerry cares about. In these next few months, we're going to really see if winning actually matters. In other news, real quick, <laughs> Antonio Brown is in the news again. Antonio Brown took to Twitter and he photoshopped himself in in a Ravens uniform. He he apparently wants to play with Lamar Jackson. And I'm just like, no. I mean, Hollywood Brown is over there. His cousin's over there. But come on now. It, it, it's one thing to have a quarterback like Lamar Jackson that struggles with accuracy. And, you know, he's a great athlete, but he, he needs some work being a quarterback. And putting a diva receiver like that on his team, it's just a recipe for disaster. And I know for a fact that John Harbaugh is not going to sign off on Antonio Brown being a Raven. It's just not going to happen. So it just goes to show you. And he was on Real Sports with Brian Gumble, him and his agent talking about what went down. And it's just like people are just continuously throwing mics in his face. They're interviewing him. Why should he stop being a knucklehead? People love it. People love crazy. They love to report on crazy. If he was sane, if he was just a regular average guy in the street that was doing great philanthropy work and laying low, nobody would care. But the fact that he's a nut, they want to sell as many tickets to the circus as possible. Eh, nah, that, that's not helping this dude. But do they actually care? They don't care about helping him. They care about their ratings, don't they? Hmm. Moving on, moving on. I got to give a shout out to my man Ho for this one because <laughs> he brought to me, brought to my attention the other day that, you know, my predictions have not been too sound this year in regards to football. You know, it's, listen, some of these games this year have been, they've been a little wonky, right? So you can't really blame me for that. I mean, come on, but. Here, here we go. I'm I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna try and see if I can be able to go two and zero. Possibly. We have the Bengals and Chiefs, and we also have the 49ers and Rams. Who wins? Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb in the AFC Championship game. Joe Burrow and those Cincinnati Bengals. Get to the Super Bowl. I'm, I'm going Joe Burrow all the way. Don't care. I don't care how out, outlandish it is, how nutty it sounds. Eh. 
I believe in Joe Burrow. I believe that in a wonky year like this one, strange things can happen, like the Bengals being in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So that's my prediction for the AFC. For the NFC, you know, you got the 49ers that are beating everybody with their great defense. Jimmy Garoppolo's playing like trash, but he's making a couple throws that is keeping them in the game, if not giving them the lead, and that defense is maintaining. So what do I think is going to happen? I, I don't think that Jimmy G can be able to handle this one. I think the Rams are going to roll over them. I think the Rams are going to dominate. I think Matthew Stafford is going to have a hell of a game. I think he'll have some struggles. But offensively, they have too much firepower. The only thing that concerns me is that Sean McVay is very stubborn, and he needs to make sure that Cam Akers is not dropping the football. If he's not looking good, you got to turn to Sony Michelle. You got to make sure that you keep these guys fresh. Don't go to just one back. You got to make sure that you keep them off balance with that running game. So Rams winning in the NFC, Bengals winning in the AFC. We're going to have a very, very interesting Super Bowl. I can't wait to see that one. Can't wait. Can't wait. Coming up after the break, Anthony Davis returns for the Lakers tonight. James Harden. James Harden has had enough of Brooklyn. David Ortiz gets elected. And I have a lot to say about what's going on in the state of baseball right now. A lot. On a Tuesday night, Soul Even. Welcome back, y'all. Anthony Davis returns for the Lakers, and Laker fans are happy, I guess. You know, the, the big man is back after being out over a month with the sprained MCL. They played the Nets tonight, won the game 106-96. to 96. Anthony Davis played 25 minutes. He was on a minutes restriction, had eight points, two rebounds, two assists, four fouls. So he hit a couple jump shots. You know, people said that he looked decent. Okay, you know, shouts to him for coming back. I do believe that he's going to help the Lakers if he can stay healthy. Uh, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to make a lot of ground up in the Western Conference, but if they can all stay healthy, if Kendrick Nunn can be able to come back, maybe something can happen. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the, the trade deadline is coming up. It's going to be very interesting for the Lakers. LeBron James just played out of his mind. 33 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. Just played a phenomenal game. But the guy that we're going to talk about tonight that all the headlines and the stories on is James Harden. James Harden was the sole survivor tonight for the Brooklyn Nets. No Kyrie because it's a home game. Kevin Durant is still nursing his injury, his knee injury. And we're hearing reports that James Harden is frustrated, doesn't like the 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 living situation in Brooklyn. He prefers Central Houston. Of course he does. He was there for what, almost a decade. Of course, he's not going to like Brooklyn. He's not from Brooklyn. He's not from this particular neck of the woods. It's different for him. I'm also hearing that the whole Kyrie Irving situation has bothered him a lot. You know, I've got a little intel. Shouts to my man Bishop, big time Nets fan. Uh, that James Harden, after pretty much every interview or during every interview post game, you know, he always talks about that Kyrie needs to be there. Kyrie should be there full time. He makes a joke saying, hey, he'll go over there and give him the vaccination himself and, you know, try to try to get this this ball rolling because it's about winning a championship, right? But now I'm starting to look at things a little differently. I think that James Harden is looking at it like, man, I, I got to make sure everything is perfect. I got to make sure everything goes great because I ain't going to be here next year. I ain't going to be here next year. That's what I feel. I feel he's doing the Magic Johnson. I ain't going to be here face because all signs point to him leaving. He was offered a contract extension. He didn't sign it. We're starting to hear rumblings that he's not happy with the Brooklyn situation in regards to the living situation. The Kyrie Irving situation is getting a little hostile. 
And now we're starting to hear these little tidbits out of his camp saying that, you know, James Harden may like to play in Philadelphia. Possibly. You know, James Harden wants to test free agency. Is anybody shocked here? Because I'm not. I'm not at all. This is a guy that forced his way out of a good situation in Houston. They gave him everything that he wanted for 10 years or so. And they got close to winning a title. They did not. And even still, he still babied his way out of Houston. So do you think that he actually has any loyalty to the Brooklyn Nets? Absolutely not. James Harden is going to be able to move around. He's going to do whatever he wants to do because he's James Harden. And when you give power to certain athletes, they're going to abuse it. That's what they do. They continue to point the finger and pass the blame on to why things didn't work and why this is not that. And blah, blah, blah. That's what he's doing. He's going to make it very uncomfortable for the Brooklyn Nets so they don't offer him a contract. And then he goes where he wants to go. He wants to be in Philly. Daryl Morey's there. I think uh, Joel Embiid, that'll be a decent partnership between him and uh, and Harden. Harden hasn't really gotten along with big men, you know, during his career. So we'll see what happens. If he wants to go there, fine. I'm sure Philly's going to embrace him with open arms. But buyer beware. It's just like gremlins, right, where guy brings home Gizmo and they say, listen, you know, Take care of him. He's a great pet, great friend, but don't feed him after 12. Don't do it. Don't feed him after 12. There's a reason why they gave that guy the disclaimer. Something goes wrong if you do so. So the disclaimer needs to be from every other team that's had James Harden. Hey, listen, as long as you give him what he wants, as long as you bend over backwards and then bend over again, He's fine, but the minute that things are not going the way he wants to, he's going to start to pass the buck. He's going to start to play the blame game of why things are not working the way they are. So just be careful. Don't push that button. Don't give him that particular type of power. Is Daryl Morey going to listen? I don't think so. Daryl Morey loves James Harden and vice versa. I'm sure it's a great pairing, but are they going to win? No. But the other question is, how desperate is your franchise to tie yourself to James Harden? I think Philly's pretty desperate. So, just like the Clippers, sorry to say, just like the Brooklyn Nets, who they don't have a history of winning, they went ahead and pulled the risk to go get James Harden. Is it working out? We'll see what happens after this year. We'll see what happens this year in the playoffs. And see if they can be able to get that championship and then it, nothing matters. If James wants to leave, he leaves. They don't care. But if he doesn't deliver, if this trio doesn't deliver, what is the, how do you pick up the pieces as a franchise if you're the Nets? Now the Philadelphia 76ers will be the next landing spot possibly for James Harden. Maybe the camp is just kind of throwing that name out there. I'm sure that there's other teams. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. But just like Gizmo, you don't feed the beast. You just don't do it. Moving on. Moving on. Big Poppy David Ortiz has been elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Shouts to David Ortiz. Shouts to Big Poppy. What a career he has had. DH, I think he's only the second DH in Major League history to be in the Hall of Fame as literally a full-time DH. He played first base, you know, quite a few years. He was in the Twins, and but when he got to when he got to Boston, he was primarily a DH. So, shouts to Big Poppy. He's the only uh, electee from this class. He's the only one. Seventy-seven point nine percent of the votes goes to Big Poppy. You know they showed the video. I watched it on Instagram where Pedro Martinez was there uh, when he got the call and was it was a great moment. 
was a really, really great moment for David Ortiz. And does he deserve it? Absolutely. 100% he deserves it. Over 500 home runs. Uh, almost hit 300 for his career. Led the Red Sox to three championships. Like, the guy was just, he was just amazing. From the time that he landed there, from the time that he got traded from Minnesota to Boston, it was like a switch had been flipped. It's like he really realized, yo, this is big time. Like, I'm not in Minnesota anymore where things are, you know, we're good, we were good, but this is Boston. I got to step it up. I got to show people how good I am. Because when he got traded, you know, I think people were like, okay, David Ortiz is a, you know, a decent player. He's not a star. He's a decent player. He's going to be a good role guy for this team for years to come. But what he turned into, no one saw coming. No one saw this. MVPs, championships, just the joy of playing baseball, the leadership qualities that he had, you know, the out the outspokenness that I loved. With David Ortiz, he never held his tongue. He was a guy that was always honest. He was always upfront. He was always very candid. And that's the type of athlete that I respect. So shouts to David Ortiz, man. You know, his career really kind of makes you makes you dream big, right? That you can be able to get success, but then there's another level of success. Like, he made it to the major leagues with the Twins. He was doing what he had to do. He was building a career for himself. He made it out of the Dominican Republic. He made it out of the slums. But there was this other level that he got to. There was this other level of fame and stardom and superstardom that he never thought possible. Or maybe he did. Maybe that's why it happened. Because he saw it. He knew how great he was. All he had to do was get a chance. Somebody just had to give him a chance. Just open that door. Just crack the door open a little bit. And he's just going to kick it open and never leave. And that's exactly what he did. So, shouts to David Ortiz. That's the that's the beauty of this, this time. When people get inducted, it's a happy time for everybody. For the fans, fans of that player, fans of that team, everything. Just the city everything like people can celebrate together it's it's a joyous time but there's also a dark side of the moon there's a dark side to this this story as great as it is to see David Ortiz get in what happened today was a travesty what happened today is a shame we had the hall of fame we should also have the hall of shame because, and shouts to Zach, I, I, you know, he, he already know what it is. He knows what's coming next. What I saw is a sport that likes to pick and choose when they want to be on their high horse, right? David Ortiz, as great as he is, Mike Piazza, as great as he is, they all have some type of checkered situation going on they were in a report but they never really tested or you know Mike Piazza came out and said okay but here's my problem you can't have a hall of fame without your most important milestone breakers Pete Rose is the hits leader not in the hall of fame Roger Clemens is one of the greatest strikeout artists of all time not in the hall of fame kurt schilling was actually a part of those boston teams that david ortiz was on not in the hall of fame barry bonds the all-time home run leader the guy that had more intentional walks in a single season than most teams have combined that guy guy who had what seven mvps guy who hit over 700 home runs, who has over 500 stolen bases, that guy doesn't get into the Hall of Fame. So let me get this straight. For a sport that was dead, dead in the mid-90s, had a strike, nobody cared about baseball, you know what brought 
baseball back in 98, the home run ball. The home run chase of 98 between Maguire and Sosa. Newsflash, two steroid users. Everybody was dancing in the streets celebrating because the ratings, everybody was just watching baseball. Sosa and Maguire were on Oprah. Baseball on Oprah? That's how big it was and the money was coming in and everybody was loving it. But then Barry Bonds said, you know what? Maybe I should try it. Maybe I should try to get into the celebration because they're having so much fun. So why don't I do it? A lot of other players said the same thing. Barry Bonds did what he did, allegedly, right? But that still doesn't take away from the Hall of Fame career this man had. He had 500 stolen bases before 98. He had 500 homers before that time as well. Had, what, three MVPs? But because they want to be on their high horse, they can be able to keep him out. I always remember how disrespectful Bud Selig was when Bonds broke the record. He didn't even want to acknowledge him. Like, Barry Bonds is the one who put a black stain on your your game. Newsflash, baseball has been a shit sport for a long time in regards to corruption and BS and steroid use and all these other things. It's not innocent. But you would think that these writers would make it seem like this sport is the purest thing ever. Newsflash, you kept blacks and Spanish players out of your league. It took a while for you guys to even realize what you were doing. Hell, Boston, the Boston Red Sox took the longest to actually have the first black player on the team. So we're going to talk about dignity and pride and honor and all these other things that all of these old head writers like to talk about. How can you erase numbers? They're there. Barry Bonds, his numbers won't go away. They shouldn't go away because he did them. Whether you think it's wrong or not, they're there. We don't know what steroids does. We, don't, we still don't know what it does. All I know is a great player with great numbers and a great career has been blacklisted out of the Hall of Fame as well as Roger Clemens, as well as Kurt Schilling, as well as some others. It's bullshit. That's all it is. That's all it is. Just because they don't like Barry Bonds, they don't like Roger Clemens, they don't like Kurt Schilling, maybe for whatever views he has politically or not, they don't like him. It does. I don't care about none of that stuff. I care about what they did on the baseball diamond, on the field. Because we kind of go into history. How do you know that those players back in the day weren't taking amphetamines? How do you know that they weren't taking supplements or enhancements to be able to stay on the field and stay healthy? But those guys held in, get, get held in high acclaim. Oh, those, those guys that played in 1820, so good. Those guys who played it in 1920, so good. I keep hearing about Mickey Mantle. I keep hearing about all these guys. I don't care. They had their time in the sun. They're in the Hall of Fame. Don't deny guys who have the numbers in. That's nonsense. A game that's been dirty for decades is looking at players who bent the rules as Yo, you can't come in. Numbers are numbers. It's just like I say the monuments around the United States. Don't take them down. You put something there. You put something there and you say, hey, this was this and this is why this happened and blah, blah, blah. Put Barry Bonds in. If you want to say that this was a steroid error and, you know, the numbers, we don't we don't know. What's what? Okay. But you give that man his plaque. You give that man the respect of being in the Hall of Fame because he deserves it. All of these baseball enthusiasts and these baseball quote-unquote purists. These guys, hey, they cheated the game. They cheated the game. I'm sure that those are the same people that guys who make mistakes in their lives, you know, probably made some mistakes when they were younger. 
they look at them as, oh, they don't deserve a second chance. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with giving these people a second chance. There's nothing wrong with giving Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Kurt Schilling their time in the sun. Because the last time I checked, my eyes told me that there's probably maybe three baseball players that are better than Barry Bonds in the history of the game. That guy's not in the Hall of Fame. Make it make sense to me. It can't make sense to me because the old white men that are on the writer's board or whatever it is for the Hall of Fame, they can't see around it because he's cheated the game and, you know, he wasn't a good person. He didn't he he wasn't a great interview. So the first chance they get to stick it to Barry Bonds, that's what they do. This is why nobody watches your dead sport. Nobody cares about baseball. This is why kids in the inner cities don't play it. Because where's the payoff? Guys that look like me, guys that look like them, you just told them that they're not allowed in the Hall of Fame. You just told them that maybe the greatest player that they've ever seen is not allowed in the Hall of Fame because of what you think. Yet there's other people that have admitted that they did wrong. They're in. Hell, I'm a Mets fan, and I think that Mike Piazza getting into the Hall of Fame over Barry Bonds is bullshit. Call Spade Spade. But this is why nobody watches your dead sport. This is why the lockout is going on, and only people in that little sectional part of the United States, and maybe some people overseas, give a shit. It's because you've made the game boring you've made the game unpleasant to watch you've made your decisions bigger than baseball you're not bigger than baseball you're just somebody that stencils your name or stencils your little circle somewhere that's your importance to society nobody should know your name nobody should care about what you do outside of just doing the right thing by putting Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, and Kurt Schilling in the Hall of Fame. No, no, no. You want to make it about you. Well I, well, I wouldn't let my kid. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about what your moral opinions are. There's a lot of guys in the Hall of Fame in, in football and basketball that didn't have great off-the-field situations, that weren't great guys, that weren't great guys on the court, on the field. But they're in the Hall of Fame because their numbers say that they are. This is why, for as long as I've loved baseball, I'm starting to go the other way now. Because guys that deserve to be in on their numbers, no matter how I feel about them personally, I'm not a big Roger Clemens fan, I'm not a Kurt Schilling fan, but they deserve to be there. And if somebody like me can be able to say that in regards to how I feel about them personally, why should you that have the power to bring him in, to bring them in, think otherwise? You're penalizing these guys for something that wasn't even considered illegal or banned substance. Like, really? Really? So as soon as you, if you want to say that everybody who's tested positive after we Put the mandate down and you want to go ahead and draw that line in the sand? Eh, fine. Not Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds deserves to go in. Kids need to know how great this guy was. They need to be able to go to Cooperstown and see all of the great milestones and achievements that this man single-handedly put on and did. They're not going to get that chance now because they're off the ballot. How convenient. I'm sure that's what the plan was this entire time. Makes you guys look tough, right? It makes you guys look smart. It makes you look small. It makes baseball look small. On a day where we're supposed to be cheering and celebrating David Ortiz, we got to talk about this shit. We got to talk about how you guys can go from one extreme to the next. It don't make sense. And this is why nobody cares. This is why nobody cares about baseball. This is why baseball will fall lower than NASCAR. It'll fall lower than golf. 
because nobody wants to be you guys anymore. You guys are just, you'll sit there in your little room with your little desk, with your little paper, and feel like the biggest person in the world when you're really not. I've never been more ashamed to be a baseball fan as I am today. Never been more ashamed. And I really don't know how I'm going to be able to get that love for the game back after what they pulled today. You know, a lot of people are going to be on the side of these writers. Oh, just, it's justified. It's, a, it's bullshit. We all know it. It's bullshit. Coming up after the break, the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. On a Tuesday night. So I'll leave it. This is the God Jensen Gals. Just want to give a shout out to All Even Podcast, the best sports podcast out there. Keep up the amazing work. Also check us out at CigarJensenGals.com, where everyday apparel for cigar smokers. Let's get it. What's going on? What's up with you? It's your boy, the Candyman, the ALFRE to the D. It's your boy, Alfred, from the Rap Lab Podcast. And it's the one and only True G. Just call me the QG from the Rap Lab Podcast. And you tuned in to All Even with Barry Grant. Boy, that shit crazy. Welcome back, y'all. So without further ado, the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. The Dummy verse is growing. (laughs) And every Tuesday, we pick a winner. It was a lot to choose from, but there's always one. I had to choose one. May I have the drum roll, please? And the winner is... John Stockton, former point guard for the Utah Jazz, came up short in the NBA Finals against the Bulls in back-to-back years, is the all-time leader and assist in the NBA. John Stockton is my winner for... Because, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, John Stockton is an alumni of Gonzaga. Son went there, he went there, has records there. You know, had great career there, right? Has season tickets for every year. It's always there at Gonzaga games. Well, Gonzaga decided to pull John Stockton's season tickets because he refused to wear a mask in the building. Now, I don't know what his political views are. I really don't care. But for Gonzaga to look at their big time alum and say all right this is enough you know it gotta be bad like what would make john stockton go into the building say nope i'm not gonna do that today nope (laughs) every everybody else in the building got masks on except john stockton and they look at him like yeah i don't know what we're gonna say i mean that's that's john stockton no we gotta tell him to put the mask on though what it's john stockton though yeah I, I, i know we i but it's John Stockton. Like, you put people in an awkward spot. They don't want to have to lay hands on you. They don't want the security guard to come out of nowhere and have to tackle John Stockton. Do you know how that's you know how that's gonna look, man? Just follow the rules. Don't be like Beasley. Don't be like Cole Beasley on this show. Don't go into the Hall of Fame for the wrong reasons, John. Just follow the rules, man. You're too old to be to be fighting like that. You're too old to be going the other way. Well, I not get to wear my mask. I'm an American. I have rights. I'm in, I'm in the Hall of Fame. I, you don't you don't tell a Hall of Famer to just shut up and put it on or get the hell out. That's what you're gonna do before they beat you up, beat your little ass up, and throw you out of the building. How about that? Don't act tough. Don't act tough at a at a basketball game. Don't do that. Nobody does that. Tell me that John Stockton is not one of those entitled people, those entitled Americans that he's probably one of those people that pull up to a self-service side of the gas station and just waits there like, I, I need my gas pump. <laughs> like, to the point like, bro, you you at the self-service. You want full service. You got to come around. I'm not coming around. I just, just, just come over. Just, just pull the line. Like, what are you doing, bro? Just, just follow the rules. Follow the rules. Don't be that guy to go into the supermarket and create your own your own line. Like, yo, everybody else is lined up over here. Why are you in the front? What are you doing? Just follow the rules, man. Follow the rules. So, John Stockton, I'm sorry you got to hold this L. 
And I'm sure they assisted you to the door as they kicked you out of Gonzaga Arena. But you're a winner for Dummy of the Week. That is all for this show. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. But until then, stay safe. Stay cool. Peace. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at All Even Podcast. Listen to the show on Podbeam, Amazon Music, Spotify, and wherever you find your podcasts available. And check out my YouTube channel, All Even Podcast. And don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button.